Well, good morning. I, congratulations, first of all, for being in this first session in the Estoril room. If the early uh, bird catches the worm, you are those birds, and this is the worm. Um, I'm Jesse, cleverly, I'm moderating this session, and uh, I'm going to be speaking to uh, Lance Sloan, who is the Head of Digital Programming and Development at Warner Brothers, and Director and Producer Kevin Tenshaw rowan And uh, we will be talking about what these guys achieved with Mortal Kombat Legacy, which was the most viewed web series of 2011. With, I'm doing so well, I'm remembering all my facts, the names, the job titles, everything. Uh, 65 million video views. And uh, it is a really, really great story, I have to say. So um, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Thanks for joining us. They got in from LA yesterday, so they're feeling pretty special. Um, and, uh, for, but I think, first of all, let's watch uh, the first film, because um, if you're not awake, that will certainly wake you up. So if we could roll the first VT, please. Thank you. Get over here. There's a flood coming, gang. And I'm offering you a place on the ark. the day at the office if you're in Mortal Kombat, I guess. Um, so um, I think what we'll do is let's just start by um, just, just introduce, sort of just explain to the guys kind of how, you know, how this began, because Kevin, it started with you, didn't it? Uh, yeah. So it kind of started with this, this short film that I kind of, I, I did it on my own because I wanted to kind of distance myself a bit from the dance and music world, which I was kind of immersed in. Uh -huh. So I just, over the weekend, did this short film with a bunch of my friends, nothing but favors. And it, <laughs> I, a lot of people think I'm lying when I say this, but it, would, it was accidentally publicized on YouTube. At the time, I wanted to create a private link to send to uh, my friends and my agent mm -hmm. to, to get notes. But yeah. I guess there's a setting in YouTube. I wasn't that savvy at the time with, the, with YouTube to create it a private or public. Yeah. And then I started seeing some stuff on Twitter, and I thought people, somebody maybe beat me to making some sort of live action Mortal Kombat. Yeah. So I clicked on it, and it was my YouTube page. So I kind of panicked because I thought there were some legalities involved with that. And just, and just before we, we, we get to the, uh, to the also the great story about the call from Warners, but um, just, just what, how big was that? I mean, you know, you say you did that with favors, and it was shot over the weekend, and obviously here you are sitting on a panel at MIP, not bad for a weekend's work, right? So, yeah. so, so, so what, what was that? For, I mean, what was in that first, that first film that you made? Uh, it, was, it was a very gritty, hard-edged version of Mortal Kombat. I yeah. tried to 
because I didn't have a budget to do grand special effects and yeah. do superpowers and all that kind of stuff, uh -huh. I, I really kind of grounded it in, in as much reality as possible. Yeah. So it was, you know, I asked Michael Jai White to play Jax, Jerry Ryan to play Sonya, a couple fight choreographer friends of mine to put together a cool two minute sequence and, yeah. and I edited it myself and it was, got to be this thing called Mortal Kombat Rebirth, yeah. which is, uh, you know, it, it, I think within the first couple of days it skyrocketed to like seven million views, which, I did not expect at all. And, and, and just, just to be clear, was your intention at that point to, to, to do any more than that? Or were you, were you trying to win yourself a gig? Were you, or were you just amusing yourself for a week? No, I, I, would, I, I, I was going to use it to take into the room with the pitch. You know, I, I think a lot of directors got used to making these things called ripomatics, which is you just cut together a bunch of other films yeah. to portray a tone and a style. Uh, that started to just become common practice and yeah. felt a little old. Uh -huh. Almost felt like you weren't doing enough. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to just go the extra step yeah. and, and maybe just shoot the first 10 minutes of the film. So from now on, if you want to pitch the movie, guys, you just make the movie and go in and pitch the movie <laughs> you've already made. Um, exactly. Great. Okay. Well, w there's so much to talk about. I'm trying to sort of hustle us along. So, so Lance, just, I mean, when we were talking on the phone before this session, it was interesting to me where you'd come from before you, I think, went back to Warners, didn't you? So in a way, you've got quite a good temperamental fit with, with a man who's up for betting some, at least some of the farm on the future, right? Well, that's for sure. I mean, I've been at Warner for almost 12 years now, and um, they've allowed me to go out and start a company, get more into independent film, make some movies, go to Sundance. Mm. Last year, we, we released a movie um, under my other company called Bandito Brothers, a film called Act of Valor. Mm. And it was kind of branding at its finest. It was working with the Navy SEALs, and mm. we used the real guys in that film. But during that time, you know, talking to Warner Brothers about the digital initiative and how they wanted to experiment and how they really wanted to push the envelope mm. on how we capture content, but mm -hmm. also how we distribute content. Sure. And that was really appealing to me to have that kind of horsepower behind you, but also the freedom to go do exactly what Kevin and I were allowed to do and distribute it in a way that kind of pushes the envelope. Mm. So I was really excited to start this endeavor with them and, and very quickly into the process, uh, his video came out, and we were preparing to do, there were two other shows. We launched another show called H Plus mm -hmm. um, towards the end of last year, and that was in partnership with Brian Singer, and that's gone on to do very well as, as well, and um, we have a channel on YouTube that that show is housed on, and we were preparing for that and another show, and, and this video popped up, and I think the studio, the piracy people were trying to figure out what to do with him. Yeah. And... Uh, this is the, uh, the cool. Yeah. Well, th this was where, you know, this is the beauty of being able to work with a company that has flexibility. And, yeah. you know, the, at nine in the morning when we all started viewing this, this film that Kevin had posted up, you know, it was like they were going after him. They yeah. were going to hunt him down. And, yeah. and by four in the afternoon... You're like, that's good. I know some guys <laughs> from the Navy SEALs. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, by four in the afternoon, we were arranging a meeting with him, and we wanted to meet with him as a potential director on, oh. on one of these other projects. And he came in, and, and, and also the other interesting thing, his video had worked its way around this, at Warner Brothers you know, to the highest level, and we started to have a little fan base being created. And, yeah. and our new CEO of the company, Kevin Sujihara, was like, who is this guy? And this is incredible. And I said, we're meeting with him today at four. And he was like, no way, that's awesome. And that's always good when you're one step ahead of the thing that your boss has just become obsessed with. It was really by, cool. Right? And, and the beauty yeah. was, is we sat down, and I'm not kidding, maybe three minutes into the meeting, it was like, forget this other show. Yeah. No disrespect to the other show, but we have to try and realize his vision. Yeah. And we had four months from the time that he and I met yeah. to when um, our games group, our games division was launching the new game. Yeah. And uh, so long, long story short, we, I said, hey, let's go take a walk and go meet the CEO and see if we can, you know, just barge in <laughs> on his office. And sure enough, we knocked on the door. They were in a board meeting, I think. There was like 25 guys all in suits and... <laughs> and they kind of looked at me like, what the heck are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, but I wanted you to meet Kevin. And they're like, they all jumped up. It was so beautiful. They jumped up and they're like, that's it. That's the guy. Hey, what, what are you guys doing? I said, I, well, we're here. We just wanted to say hi. And, and, and Kevin Sujihara was like, what are you guys doing? And I said, I don't know, but I think what we should do is 
bring Mortal Kombat to life. But when you got the call, uh, you, you thought you weren't sure, okay, is this where I get sued and sent yeah, to jail? Yeah, I thought I, was gonna, get... I thought I was going to go to Warner Brothers. This is what I imagined. I was going to go to Warner Brothers, go on the lot, <laughs> shake everyone's hand, and then the last person who shakes my hand goes, and here's your papers. You got served. And I, yeah. so that was going to be a big joke you know, on yeah. me. And then so it was a very welcoming surprise. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. And that does seem in a way, I mean, we'll talk about this hopefully if we have time later, but it does seem to me that you know, whereas maybe t even two years ago, you probably would have been sued. And then yes. suddenly all the studios are like, yeah, but hold on, maybe we could do judo with YouTube. Like, you know, it's It's, like it's kind of amazing. You know, and, and I, more than anything, wish I, I could take credit for it. But the fact that Mortal Kombat has been used as somewhat as, a, as a, an example yeah. of how you can put take risk online, yeah. incubate it, and see how it can progress from that yeah. on, it's, it's been... I, for me, it's been really amazing. That's extraordinary. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point, too, is that we're really figuring out ways to move platforms. So, yeah. you know, from that, um, we started discussing the feature film. Yeah. And that evolved into a place right now where we're, we're in the green light committee at the studio. And, but in the meantime, we're able to do a second season. Yeah, so let's just talk quickly about creative process. So, 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 you, so you barge into the, I love the sort of mythic meeting, you barge into the board meeting, the guys in the suits will jump up and go, yo, and high five you. And, and then you, you, know, you get into development and, um, you know, and all the rest of it. So, so just talk about, cause, because my impression is that they left you pretty much to your own devices. I mean, or is that? that that's, the, that's the thing that's, that's uh, great about this. And I hope that kind of spirit remains intact as this model grows yeah. uh, because it does allow a lot of creative freedom mm -hmm. because it's somewhat of a new format. A lot, there is a sense of hands off. Yep. Um, and that allowed the writers and I to kind of just take what we loved from the video game and write it from a fan perspective yep. as opposed from a model perspective where it's like, here are the comparable you know, films, go make it like that. Yes, exactly. So it's, hey, let's just create something that we know we like yeah. And uh, hopefully people will respond to it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that, that's just very interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, this year it feels like everyone's going, oh, yeah, web series are the new cable. Right. It's true because, and, I mean, everyone watch it. At least everyone I know and myself, I watch a lot of digital content web series yeah. on my Apple TV. Yeah. So I'm not projecting it on just a laptop. No. I'm watching it on my home television. Yeah. So, so, so in terms of, you know, obviously your budget setting, you're trying to plan scale, you're trying to think about your aspiration, you've, you've now got the fan base interested, that's kind of scary and good. Um, it, you know, where did you decide to, I mean, I mean you know, when you look at, the, if you, I mean, I advise you all to go and have a look at this thing, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, I'm not, it's not kind of my thing, but I have to say I was absolutely gripped. And one of the things that obviously you notice first up is the production value. So um, you made the first thing for nothing in a weekend, and then you made the second thing for more, obviously. Well, uh, that's, that's kind of the right, it's like a blessing and a curse. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a great, it's a great uh, exercise, and it's really good. The thing is, I had somebody from physical production kind of joke with me. It's like, hey, you know, you keep proving to them that you can do it for no money, so we're just going to keep giving you no money. <laughs> so, but, you know, it, it's great because the support has been really amazing. They just trust that you can pull it off. But where do you draw the line? I mean, Kevin, this is something that you, um, uh, sorry, Lance, this is something you have to, to, this is, you know, you're, you're the production guy with the budget and, you know, in your hand. I mean, where do you draw the line? Where do you say, no, okay, this is, uh, you know, this is good enough for the web or this is too much for the web or this is not enough for the web. I mean, where does that, I think everyone knows what a network show needs to look like, but what does a web series need to look like production? -wise? Well, that's a good question. And that's always a hard thing for a studio. Yeah. You know, definitely there's a bar that's set at Warner Brothers yeah. and any studio for that matter so there was a lot of discussion internally of like just allow us to go create this we have the trust and faith in Kevin as a filmmaker yeah. you know he can not only direct the film but he can work with the writers and, and he knows how to market the film yeah. he knows how to release it and let's just let him do his job mm. and not cover him with you know 20 Notes. people yeah. and, and they allowed that which is amazing so there was that conversation of like, well, it has to look a certain level, and we had a lot of back and forth, and ultimately, we, I, we felt like we had a happy medium, and we're still trying to figure out the price point, because when you're on YouTube, there's a certain CPM, and you know, the dollars have to make sense for the production budget that we're spending, and 
we feel like we're there, you know, we feel like... Um, but I mean, I'm assuming in season one, the dollar, I mean, you had no idea what the, what the views were going to be. And I mean, obviously nothing, 65 no. million, wow, you were never expecting that, right, really. And even 65 million views on YouTube is, yeah. you know, what's the CPM of, I mean, what you're talking about, 65,000 pounds probably in yeah, terms I mean, of it was, YouTube. It was all over the map, so. so. So it's not currently something that washes its face right there on YouTube, although I'm imagining the ancillaries and the brand building and, I mean, the studio takes quite a wide view, does it, of value in that context? I think, you know, at, at that point, we sure took a wide view at it. Now, I think we're <laughs> yeah, seeing... Take a slightly more focused view now. Well, I think every day it changes, yeah. you know. They're, the advertisers are coming, yeah. and they're, they're looking at it differently, and they're, they're preparing and planning on their, their spend for the year or the yeah. next 24 months. Yeah. And they're looking for this type of content. Mm. And, you know, I think the thought was, you know, YouTube really looked at it and said, hey, you know, these guys are raising the bar, and... Um, it's not crazy over the top budget wise, and we can make a run at it. And do you, Kevin, as a, um, as a filmmaker, do you, I mean, obviously the web series, you know, you could say a web series is just a TV series with shorter episodes, or you could say a web series is a piece of social media sitting inside a community, or you could say a web series, I mean, in the old days when people came and talked to you about this sort of thing, it was like, and the audience, and the great thing is the audience are going to choose how it ends, you know, so, so you, know, you know, on this line between basically a television series delivered on the web and the audience choose their ending, I mean, where do you sit in terms of how different is a web series from a TV series in terms of its form? Well, from a, just a pure creativity storytelling standpoint you have to really figure out how to capture your, your viewer and tell a story in 10 minutes yep. which it's a very particular I, I think style yeah and it's a very particular art form in, in a way a trailer is a very particular art form yeah. and skill to tell a story in two minutes so in a way your background in music was useful to it's you, very right? useful yeah. yeah to keep the pacing because uh you're also fighting AD, you know, ADD nature online. I'll be looking at another window 30 seconds yeah. in if I'm not into it. Yeah. So um, just from that standpoint, you, you, know, you have all of that. But for me, I, the reason why I felt it was really good to, to do as an exercise is that it's not just about those 10 minutes. It is about what spawns after, yeah. um, whether it be building the interest to a movie and and getting an audience over time yeah. and helping the game you know, sell more units. I, I think just from a, it's a unique form of advertisement now. You know, it, as much of it's original standalone content, it is somewhat of a small commercial for a bigger idea. And that's something that I had never been forced to think about. Yeah. But it was really unique for from a director standpoint to kind of. But but way. in your head, presumably you had. Did you have the big arc for your sort of epic? For sure, definitely. You know, uh, as a director, every every director wants to make a movie, yeah. right? So that's that was the goal from the start. Got it. But as I started to get really into it, there were other levels of uh, things that started to interest me, just from a model standpoint. And you don't, as a director, get really excited about that because. Typically, you're in a box, like, oh, I'm making a movie. That's yeah. it. And, and to create something that's somewhat new is a kind of a chance you don't really get yeah. often. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of fun for but, me. But, but the social, I guess what I'm reaching for is this. I mean, I, I heard an anecdote about when YouTube were handing out their first sort of slew of premium channels. And, you know, they had a pitch from a very established filmmaker, which they turned down because they said, we've got no doubt that you can make great content, but we've got serious doubts that you're interested in running a YouTube channel, i.e., I guess, being part of that conversation. So. In terms of the fans' reaction, I mean, obviously the fans' reaction is a huge part of why you now find yourself in green light meetings for the movie. But how do you, you know, how do you wrangle and approach that relationship? Because certainly, I mean, when I was at, at a broadcaster, the fans, truth be told, right, you get a letter from the fans and you're like, oh, how sweet they can write. I mean, you know, it's not, you know, it's it's not like, oh, great feedback, oh, great, the people that make our life possible, because you're so used to just pumping the content out one way and. Well, you especially know. this audience, the fanboy audience is an audience you just simply can't please. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they love to hate yeah. a lot, yeah. but, but they also love to watch. Yeah. So it, it was a very unique experience going through uh, the YouTube comments. Well, that was the one thing that was fascinating to us, just sitting and watching. And, you know, YouTube would call us every single day and say, you've broken another record in different countries. And the one thing that was overwhelming, not only are the crazy amount of views we did where the, the people liked it. Yeah. And I think 
think we were at like 80%, which is unheard of on YouTube. And, yeah. and that was one of the things that really led to the discussion about the feature. Yeah. And, you know, the studio was looking at the schedule and saying, oh, 2012 we're full, 2013 is full, maybe in 2014 if you're lucky. When we have another game coming out, by the way, hopefully, and and we sat down with um, the head of distribution, who's a master of distribution, and kind of met with me almost like, ah, kid, come on in. You know, <laughs> three minutes later, you'll be out of here. And, but when I started to show him not just the views, but just the comments, it became sport for him. And you know, he wasn't a YouTube guy at all, yeah. but he, he got so into it to the point where he was calling me going, hey, did you read this one? And he <laughs> figured out how to do a screen grab and send it screen grab to me and like, people really want this movie and could you guys get the movie by the summer of 2013? Could yeah. you deliver it by then? And so we had an organic kind of enthusiasm that wasn't about the business so much as you had, you know, this man saw firsthand the power of the platform. Mm. And that, to me, was like, all right, I'm so glad I made the choice to jump back and, in. And now, you, you know, there you are, and you're sitting in what sounds like an amazingly interesting bit of Warner's with an amazingly interesting brief, but you've built this huge audience for one of your brands. I mean, massive, and unlike a TV or a movie guy, you, you've got, you know, you know who they are. You know, you know where they are. You can talk to those people. So, so your relationship with your audience, I would have thought now is like, you know, they are the farm in a way that... So true. And, and that's to me where Kevin becomes a filmmaker for the future because yeah. he has an audience that he can talk to instantly. He knows how to reach them. You know, that changes everything for someone in his shoes, for sure, and how he creates content and how he captures it. And, and that's really exciting to be part of that and, and really to foster that and, and give him the, the ammo that he needs to go out and you know, not only do Mortal Kombat, yeah, but do other absolutely. things for us. Yeah. And, I mean, and, you know, you sort of see this future where, you know, filmmakers are almost like Leonardo da Vinci with their patrons all dotted around Renaissance Italy, if I may stretch the analogy to breaking point. But I mean, you know, it, how amazing to have 65 million views to your name and a group of people who, as you say, they love to hate, but they love to watch. And, if they take you to, to their hearts as, as one of them in a way. I mean, that's a very powerful and enabling thing for you, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's why this, uh, a, lot of, a lot of fans kind of gravitated towards them because it felt like they were, I'm, you know, t to a big degree, I'm one of, I am one of them yeah. who just picked up a camera and shot something over the weekend. Yeah. Well, uh, that's an important point, too. Yeah. I mean, he knows the mythology to his deepest bone in his yeah. body. And I mean, one, one key factor is the game creator guy, Ed Boon. I mean, that guy is, protects this brand and this franchise with his, I mean, with his life. He really is fiercely um, protective over it. And, sure. and we knew we had to, once we decided to do it, we knew we had to get his support. And literally within probably 10 minutes of them meeting, they was, were, uh, they tick. bonded. Yeah. Like he, he realized, you know what, you're right. This guy, he knows the game. He grew up playing it. And he really loved the, the, the ideas that he had to even take the mythology further. And yeah. that was pretty awesome too, just to have that. So um, I'm just, I don't know about you, I could spend all day talking about this, but unfortunately the clock says we only have a, a short while. We started a bit late, so I'm just going to ruthlessly steal a few more minutes, okay? Because I kind of can't quite bear to stop talking about this. But um, so let's just talk a little bit about the movie. That's what's coming next. Uh, and this is, a, the title is a, script, a split screen blockbuster. So. So now you're making your, you've made your second season. That was good, was it? How that that was was that harder? Weirdly, with all that success, did you suffer from uh, there was more pressure, yeah. more more pressure because uh, I, I tend to treat each project as if it's its own standalone thing. You know, when yeah. season one came out, I didn't go, oh well, when we get to season two, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. you're focusing on just making that one really good. Yeah, absolutely. So. There was a lot of pressure creatively to go, oh, now, now what do we yeah. do? Because we kind of did a lot last yeah. season as far yeah. as characters. Yeah. You know? so, uh, but it's it was way great. better. But it's yeah, you know, it actually came out really great because we were able to we got some stretch new stuff the drama to show you at the a end, little so bit. You know? So yeah, we got to stretch out the dialogue a bit and, and make sure that the action was elevated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it was, it was a, a little bit more, more pressure on that, on, on a creative side. Yeah, and then the movie comes in and suddenly it's proper money and the dream came true. And well, you know, it, it's just, 
what it bigger bigger money and then there's bigger problems. Yeah, yes, that's, no, that, no. that's that's, that's well, that's, I mean, <laughs> this is in a way my heart slightly. I yeah. mean, although obviously for you as a filmmaker, I think, oh, how fantastic. But at the same time, I have to say my heart slightly sinks because I think, oh man, you know, you've had such a you know, amazing time yeah. almost in the studio theater. And, you know, now you're transferring to Broadway and it's like, oh, here comes the, here I comes know. the so pain. You the, know. The, the stakes are significantly higher. Yeah. You know? uh, and it's just it, because it's been a long journey. Yeah. You know, when you finally step foot through that door that you've been kind of <laughs> chipping out away for a long time, yeah. you step in and you're scared. Yeah. <laughs> but, I th you know, that fear ends up actually pushing me in a really but, good way. But I guess that, you know, I mean, it seems to me that, you know, one of the things all studios are seeking to do is, is lay off risk, right? And one of the ways you can lay off risk is by hiring very expensive stars. Well, it seems to me now another way you can lay off risk is by having 65 million people <laughs> yeah. telling you that what you did was great. And, and hopefully you'll be able to carry that some of that through, do you think? Yeah, yeah. I, I hope, you know, I definitely think that this fan base is the type that would want to go and experience yeah. it on a larger scale yeah. because they've kind of lived a slow burn with me yeah. for the past two and a half years or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So to, it, to see the end of the story yeah. of this Mortal Kombat tale, however crazy it is, yeah. I think is something that a lot of people will be looking at under a magnifying glass a bit. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it, as nerve-wracking as it is, it, that I, I think those nerves are what make everything I better. I guess it's just a question of carrying the spirit of that first yeah. weekend with you, right? You yes, know? that's and, right. And thinking, no, that's, that, well, that, well, that's the thing. That's what we're doing. And, um, and then finally, because uh, we are going to have to stop, I'm afraid, um, you know, as, you, as you look forward, Lance, with your, with your unit and with, with the project, I mean, what, what do you think the... I mean, obviously, you've had this amazing success and how cool is that? Presumably, you're not always going to be going off to sort of big brands that you can kind of pick, kind of tailgate, or are you? What's what's the strategy moving forward for you? Well, I think it's a combination of you know the big franchises like yeah. like a Mortal Kombat, but also you know smaller, more experimental type mm. programming, and we're trying to figure out you know budgets that that makes sense, allow us so. to go do things you know even with more freedom. So. But the idea is to, you know, really continue to push the envelope and experiment. It's still something that that's our mandate. So I, I kind of don't look forward to the day when one of these things becomes wildly successful financially because it's going to change the entire landscape. So for right now, I think we're in that great place of um, still being able to go and experiment. And do you think that the future looks like, you know, you start a brand on the on YouTube, let's say you 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 you, you know the, the next the new Mortal Kombat starts with you guys. You make a six part web series, you know. And do you think that it will always be the case that there's a sort of hierarchy of oh we made the web series, then we made another web series, then we made a TV show, then we made the movie? Or do you think there is a there is a time coming where the 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 Warner's digital YouTube channel is the premium destination, and you know that's what the Kevins of the future are all sitting there dreaming of the door they want to get through. Well, I think for me the most exciting part, and I think for the studio, it's the opportunities are endless. So, yeah. and for us to be in the digital unit versus yeah. being in the TV group or yeah. the theatrical group, yeah. and really us having a dotted line to really maximize um, the opportunities of yeah. distribution, that is. I hope and I pray that we stay in that same mode. I think, you know, with our leadership at the company, that yeah. they're very focused on it and, and, and very supportive of it. So I think that is pretty awesome where we'll be able to make these things and, and still be in our own group. But it's a hybrid of sort. You of know, course. you could have, I mean, we're now discussing with our TV group, you know, we've had some offers to take this and do something yeah. similar to what of House course. of Cards did with Netflix yeah. and do the 13 hour. Yeah. So we're in those discussions too. So that's the that's what I love about it. It's and, nice. and it kind of breaks down barriers. <laughs> to be know? in a world where there are so few rules. But I it mean, also breaks barriers great. down yeah. when you see all the studios, you know, their their units have to be profitable yeah. and they have to do what they do on their own yeah. and not collaborate. This has been phenomenal to see just the power organically of collaboration. Okay, oh, I don't want to stop. I don't know about you, but anyway, we're going to have to. So um, afterwards, anyone who would like to speak to these guys should go outside and not do that normal thing at the front because there's a meet the speakers thing going on and you just have to go and register your name so that it's all fair and democratic.
democratic. And also so we can get the next session in here. We've got a last clip to show, which I think it's no one's seen before. Um, nobody. Um, and I would really like you to join me in thanking these guys for coming and wishing them the best of luck, because I think what they've done is great. Thank you both very much.